You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5. It was a very important thing to all of us to be able to get these three great people out. Breaking overnight a reunion on American soil. The North Korean detainees are finally back home. Good morning. It's 5 o'clock. Glad you're with us. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let's get right to that breaking news. They are home. After spending more than a year in a North Korean prison, three Americans are back in the U.S. Kim Dong-chul, Kim Hak-sung, and Tony Kim all landed at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland early this morning to a hero's welcome with a giant American flag. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accompanied the men on their journey home. President Donald Trump, the First Lady, and Vice President Mike Pence were all on hand to welcome them. The president thanked North Korean leader Kim Jong-un for releasing the men, saying it was a goodwill gesture. Those three were then taken straight to Walter Reed Medical Center for evaluation before they reunite with their families. And coming up at 5.30, we're going to have more on that homecoming and what it now means for that historic summit between President Trump and the leader of North Korea. But first, let's get to the forecast. Here's meteorologist John Scalzi. Good morning, John. Good morning. Well, it was really warm yesterday. Once again, we hit the 90-degree mark. actually exceeded it at 91. And today, we'll probably do about the same sort of thing. Looking at quiet conditions across Titan radar, not round one drop of rain falling anywhere across the peninsula. We do have to this morning... A little bit of cloud cover, a plume of moisture coming out of Mexico, actually moving across the Florida Peninsula, bringing us some high thin clouds. Nothing that's going to produce any rainfall for us today. Temperatures around the region generally a little bit warmer than yesterday, in part because of the cloud cover. 66 in Parrish, Bradenton the same, Lakewood Ranch 67, Sarasota the same, Venice and Inglewood both at 69. Forecast for today similar to yesterday, calling for a daytime high near 90 with lots of sunshine. We'll talk about the weekend forecast with some big changes in it coming up in a few. All right, John, talk to you soon. Checking the roads right now. There is a scene in Manatee County. A little uh, blip there on the road as you head toward downtown Bradenton. Otherwise pretty clear. Checking farther south, the northern half of Sarasota will show you some issues there on B Ridge in the eastbound lane at Honore. Also Clark Road closer to Beneva in the eastbound lane also. And then our final map to the south will show us a little issue there on 41 just as you cross into Charlotte County in the southbound lane. Well, just in these past few months, there's been a several shootings in the North Sarasota neighborhood of Newtown. The most recent was Tuesday night right near 23rd Street. And despite that recent incident, violence has actually gone down in Newtown. Marla Spence is there live with a closer look. Marla? Good morning, guys. This neighborhood that's small in size, yet big in its history, has seen its share of crime as well as shootings. Sarasota police says, although that may be true, there has been a decline in crime and shootings in this area compared to recent years. Now, in 2017, according to Sarasota police, there were 28 aggravated assaults and batteries involving a gun and one homicide. Even though there were only a few, there's only been a few months in, into this year, the number of shootings is half of what it was last year. So far this year, there have been 14 aggravated assaults or batteries involving a gun and also one homicide. Sarasota City Commissioner Willie Shaw tells us, although a shooting or crime is always devastating, he says the number of crimes in Newtown has dropped drastically compared to past years. We have seen a decrease in guns over the last seven years. We're not seeing the same number but any number is a unwarranted and unfortunate incident. Anytime public health, welfare, and safety is at uh, risk, we have, we have an issue. Commissioner Shaw says back in 2011, there were about seven homicides just in that year coming up at 530. We're telling you what city leaders and police plan to do to keep the crime rate low in this area and promote positivity. Reporting live in Newtown, I'm Marla Spence for ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. Right now, the search for a Northport murder suspect has intensified this morning. The U.S. Marshal's Office is offering a $1,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest of this man, 22-year-old Tyrick Bell. He is wanted in connection with the January death of 19-year-old Trent Bartle Thomas. Police say Bell and at least one other person barge into a Northport home overnight, demanding money and possibly drugs. Bartle Thomas was shot and killed when he tried to intervene. 
certainly those who knew this young man are, are very distraught. Uh, we know that he had been in and out of um, some foster care throughout his early life, um, but we've seen a tremendous amount of support uh, since his death. Just worrisome. I didn't expect this to happen. Investigators believe someone has more information about what happened that night and hope they come forward and soon. Happening in Florida, a boy is still missing this morning in Orlando after a possible alligator attack. Surge crews worked all day Wednesday to try and find the boy in this retention pond. Police say someone called 911 around noon saying they saw a teen being dragged underwater. We did not witness anyone in the water, but the, we have a witness, a uh, very credible witness, who said he saw someone uh, flailing about in the water and at some point making a statement saying, it bit me. Police canvassed the neighborhood and nobody reported anybody missing, but they did find some clothes near the pond. Several gators are in that pond and seen during the search. Well, we know that traffic is one of the biggest concerns here on the Sun Coast, but could there be a better or even a safer way to drive? I-75, US-41, University Parkway, they may seem like the fastest ways to get around town, but they do have the most traffic and they also see the most accidents. So coming up tonight on ABC7, Jess Dowdrick investigates what are the best kept traffic secrets in our community? You know, Sarasota is not that little sleepy community that it once was. Uh, we have a lot of designations, you know, number one beach in the country, number one place to retire. So you Google Sarasota, that brings a lot of tourism, and with a lot of tourism brings more traffic. A lot of our deputies will stay off the main arteries when they're responding to calls. They know the roads, they know the back ways to get there. Longer sometimes isn't, longer distance sometimes isn't longer time. Tonight at 5, find out what Sarasota roadways are the most congested. And the best part, we're going to give you some shortcuts to get across town. Then at 530, we're going to head to Manatee County and give you a few shortcuts there as well. Despite a lack of rain, a Sarasota County apartment complex has an issue with flooding. Yeah, Swift and Villas is near Swift and Clark Roads. Neighbors there say water has been leaking from a nearby tank, flooding portions of the complex, two to three inches in some parts. The water covers one parking lot, makes it hard for people there to get to their cars. And it's, you know, kind of dangerous for seniors to be walking through water. Older folks have anxieties anyway. And uh, so they see something like this and they start to worry. Really, sh this shouldn't happen. Now, the county says it was a mechanical failure that took place while these tanks were being serviced. They said the problem has since been fixed, so water should begin to recede. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, a moment of impact caught on camera. How police use this crash video to teach drivers a lesson. And coming up a little later in the hour, the E. coli outbreak. It is now here in Florida. What you need to know before you, before you buy any more romaine lettuce. We're going to have that for you. But first, we're going to take you right now to Atlanta, Georgia. Nice morning there. City is just waking up. Looks like a nice morning out there, right? Yeah, it's very peaceful. Beautiful shot there. Let's get the local scene, though, from John Scalzi. Yeah, it looks pretty good for us today, too, as the kids get up and you get them ready for school. You can expect a pretty easy weather day for them. And pick up time about 71 degrees, a little bit warmer than yesterday, but not too much. And certainly sunny and dry this afternoon with a daytime high coming in near 90. So a warm day in store. A 10 out of 10 again chance of outdoor recess today with no, no problems whatsoever with any of the uh, any of the weather issues. We'll have the complete forecast for you, including maybe some weekend rains coming up in a few. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park.
Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. And it turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. ABC7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. As we continue hurricane preparedness week today, we look at reinforcing your home. The first thing you need to do is find out how your home is in terms of uh, its ability to withstand hurricane force winds. So you'll need to get an inspection of your home unless you know um, how to check it out yourself. Uh, inspections are made by uh, hurricane mitigation experts and you can call your insurance company and ask them for a list of names and they can give them to you. They'll come out, they'll let you know what you need to do to beef it up. There are certain things you can do that don't require a lot of money and they don't take a lot of time and they don't take a lot of expertise as well. Um, retrofitting projects and on my Facebook page, John Scalzi the ABC7, I put a couple of them up there. Uh, I put one hour projects, I put one day projects, and I put one week projects, links to them, and some um, very good information uh, from a, panual, a manual from FEMA called Against the Wind, telling you how to fortify your home against hurricane force winds. So it's good stuff. Go there and download that and read through it, and it'll give you all the information you need to kind of beef up your home, especially if you have gable end roofs and things like that. So we're looking at a uh, temperature of about 67 degrees by 7 a.m., 85 by 12 noon. Plenty of sunshine around. About the same kind of humidity values as we had yesterday, which I thought were pretty comfortable. And then as we head into the afternoon, late afternoon, mid-afternoon, we'll see the temperatures climb up to about 90 degrees, just about where we were yesterday. And then as we head into 7 p.m., 82, beautiful sunset coming our way. Maybe a little bit of high clouds again like yesterday, making for a gorgeous sunset. Current temperature is 67 degrees. Dew point value is just a little teeny bit higher than it was yesterday, coming in at 64. North northeast wind coming in at about 5, and we'll carry on, I think, with that northeasterly or easterly wind flow till we get to the afternoon and develop a very shallow sea breeze, very quick sea breeze near the coastline later in the day. Uh, winds might be just a little bit lighter than they were 24 hours ago as well, but temperatures are generally being held up by a little bit of cloud cover kind of streaming across our region with 65 Wachula, 66 Arcadia, 66 Mayaka, and then closer to the coast, closer to the 70 mark this morning with 69 degrees in Venice and Inglewood and 71 Longbow Key, 66 Bradenton, and as I mentioned, 67 in Sarasota. A couple of degrees warmer than yesterday because of that cloud cover around. For those of you concerned about air quality, yesterday was a good day. We actually dropped the ozone level down to 74, which puts it solidly in a, a good, an okay category. I mean, that's much better than uh, we have seen lately. We'll check it out again today. Some computer models hint at perhaps that number rising a little bit this afternoon. We'll see how it actually plays out. Doesn't look like it'll get into any kind of threatening or dangerous zone, though. The weather highlights for today include several areas of low pressure located to the north, but the good news is they stay to the north. 
we have this high pressure ridge which stays with us. Now this trough of low pressure will continue to develop down to the south of us and over the weekend we'll watch it kind of lift north bringing us shifting winds drawing up more moisture and putting this kicker of a trough right across the state of Florida giving us better rain chances particularly on Mother's Day. Taking a look at the forecast, sunny and warm today, weekend rain showers and then kind of humid as well on Mother's Day, making it feel more like summer than we've seen any day this week so far. Forecast looks like this. Nice one actually for boaters today. Should be a decent boating day. We'll have a, a wind that comes out uh, of the um, northeast uh, and uh, gives us a light chop on Bay and Inland waters. 90 for today, 89 degrees on Friday, and then on Saturday we start to moisten things up a little bit, put in that slight chance of a rain shower, but I think it's Mother's Day when the clouds really kick in, the humidity really comes back, and we have the best chance of rainfall at about 60%. 81, the good news is the cloud cover will hold down the temperature a little bit, and that's probably going to be true for several days in a row as we have an excess of cloud cover and that chance of rain each day. Back to you. All right, thanks, John. Let's take a look this morning at your first alert traffic. Not too much going on around this time in the morning. Manatee County is looking pretty slow. Most of the roadways there are pretty clear still at this time of the morning. Don't have too much to talk about there. Heading into Sarasota County, those roads are, te are decent, pretty, there, pretty much there. Well, on Clark Road, just a little blip as well as a little blip right there on B Ridge as you come off of 75. But again, most of those roads are still pretty clear at this hour. Heading a little bit farther south in the area, if you are going to Port Charlotte or Punta Gorda, leaving within the next 30 minutes or so, you have a pretty easy commute. It is 516 and that is your first alert traffic. Well, the University of Florida is changing how it holds its graduation ceremony. This after an incident, this one right here, a graduation went viral over the weekend. Several students were aggressively pushed off stage while dancing and celebrating by this staff member. Now, the president released an apology on social media. He's promised to change the policy when it comes to being on stage. Also knew the faculty member who you saw in the video who forcibly removed the students is now on a paid leave. In today's Health Smart, the FDA is warning of a shortage of EpiPens, those devices that are used to reverse the effects of overdoses or allergic reactions. The agency says manufacturing delays are the reason for what could be a short-term shortage. The devices are made to deliver life-saving drugs during emergency treatment. EpiPen producer Mylan confirms what it calls, quote, intermittent supply constraints. Mylan asks patients having problems getting EpiPens to contact their customer relations office for help finding pharmacies that do have them in stock. Still to come on Good Morning Sun Coast, Amazon is teaming up with Sears for yet another new service. This one involves your car. We're going to tell you what that is. And it's every sugar lover's dream. <laughs> Look at this. This is no <laughs> oil spill. This is a happy place. <laughs> <laughs> How much is too much? No. Let's like a, take a look at uh, the White House now. It was a busy place overnight. Yeah, the lights are mostly off now because President Trump, the first lady, had a ceremony at 2.30 a.m. at uh, Andrews Air Force Base. That is right. Those three American detainees from North Korea, they are home. They are back here on U.S. soil. We have all the details of where they are this morning and whether or not it impacts the upcoming historic summit that's coming up between the president and the leader of North Korea. We've got all the details for you straight ahead. You are watching Good Morning Suncoast right here on ABC7. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org hope. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. 
you heard how loud I, that no, was. I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Well, this weekend is the 88th year of the Sarasota Tarpon Tournament. It runs from Saturday and goes the next four weeks. Right now, we are live at the Sarasota Outdoor Club docks near Moat Marine, where we have for you Captain Jeffrey Durance. Jeffrey, good morning. Thanks for waking up with us so early this morning. Good morning. That's part of tarpon fishing. We usually start about this time of day. Oh, that's true. This is your time of day. Now, you've been fishing nearly 40 years, I understand. What does this tournament mean to you, Captain? Well, it's uh, number one, it's just tremendous, the exciting fish to catch in the tarpon. And number two, the tournament really promotes the fishery that we have here in Sarasota as well as the camaraderie with all of the folks that have been involved and all the good friends I've made over the years through fishing for tarpon. I like that. Well, I have been tarpon fishing one time, and I know from my experience that it is a fishing experience like no other, especially when they're coming out of the water. Do you find that tarpon fishing is a little bit different, or do you find that people that you have on your charters kind of fall in love with it the first time they experience it? Well, most folks, when they get on the boat, they've read about it, they've watched it on TV and studied it, and so they're really excited to start with. And then when they finally see the first school of fish, they're just, their feet are not even touching the deck. And then when they hook one, and they're, most folks, even after all of that, are not ready for what happens when the line goes tight, <laughs> it, as you know. It's real thrill. <laughs> it is. It is, a, it is a fishing like no other. So in the decades that you've been involved in this tournament, what, what has changed, if anything, over the years in it? Well, the number one of the regulations on tarpon, back in the day, you'd bring them in and kill them and hang them up on the dock. And the Sarasota Tarpon Tournament was, in 1984-85, was one of the very first tournaments in the country of any kind to go all release. And uh, so you could still take one if you wanted. And then it, there was a tarpon tag. You had to buy a $50 tag to kill one and over the years we obviously realized they're not eating them or anything so why kill them so we started releasing them a long time ago and now the rules and regulations have changed to where if the tarpon's over 40 inches long you can't even take him out of the water so all the measurements and things are done with the fish laying by the boat in the water not up on the deck so that's probably the biggest change. Yeah. All right. Very good. Hey, Captain Jeffrey, thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Best of luck to the turn to you and the tournament over the weekend. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for having me. All right. Moving on. Dramatic dash camera video shows the moment of impact when a car crashes into another vehicle being loaded onto a tow truck. A police officer was just able to barely get out of the way when it all happened. Now, no one thankfully was hurt in the incident in Texas, but police posted it on social media as a warning to drivers move over and slow down when an emergency vehicle is stopped on the side of the road. Well, you've heard of chocolate covered strawberries, chocolate covered pretzels. How about a chocolate covered highway? Yes. 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 yes, yes. That's what a town in yes. Poland experienced this week. <laughs> yep. A truck carrying 12 tons of liquid milk <sighs> chocolate hit a barrier and tipped over. The spread was anything but decadent, though. It caused a huge traffic jam and the cleanup was time consuming. The chocolate was more difficult to remove than oil, they said. Hot pressured water helped turn it into a less than appetizing version of hot chocolate. A recipe for disaster. Oh, Ray. Fortunately, no, <laughs> no serious injuries. Wow. All right, moving on. Sears is teaming up with Amazon in a whole new way. Here are today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Sears and Amazon are joining forces. If you buy your tires on Amazon, you'll soon be able to get them installed at Sears Auto Centers. It's the latest way the struggling retailer is trying to stay relevant to online shoppers. You'll soon get the chance to let Alexa run 
an entire house. Amazon is working with Lennar, the nation's largest home builder, to roll out smart homes. The so-called experience centers will be in 15 cities, including L.A. and D.C. Alexa will run the home's electronics and security systems. And a pizza party meant to promote JetBlue's Pie in the Sky promotion was canceled at LAX. So the pies were delayed by what was called technical difficulties on JetBlue's website. Despite that, the airline will be delivering 350 pies from New York to customers in LA for a few more days. Good pizza. If it gets here. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites, sponsored by Eloquis. I've always been about what's next. I'm still giving it my best even though I live with a higher risk of stroke due to AFib, not caused by a heart valve problem. So if there's a better treatment than warfarin, I'm up for that. Eloquis. Eloquis is proven to reduce stroke risk better than warfarin, plus has significantly less major bleeding than warfarin. Eloquis is FDA approved and has both. So what's next? Seeing these guys. Don't stop taking Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to, as stopping increases your risk of having a stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and, in rare cases, fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. While taking Eliquis, you may bruise more easily, and it may take longer than usual for any bleeding to stop. Seek immediate medical care for sudden signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Eliquis may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Eloquis, the number one cardiologist prescribed blood thinner. Ask your doctor if Eloquis is what's next for you. From the moment she walked in the door, we stopped having to go to the pharmacy. Certain prescriptions, um, my health plan or the pharmacy, I wasn't even able to get here. And hospice provided them, and all we had to do was call up and um, the next thing they know, there, there was another, you know, a delivery. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Uh, Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like, then click following and choose see first. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your news feed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, restaurant guide, and more. Go to MySuncoast.com slash dining. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 530. 
Frankly, we didn't think this was going to happen. Breaking overnight, the three Americans detained in North Korea back home on American soil this morning. Plus, several shootings in one Sarasota neighborhood. What the city commissioner is now saying about the number of crimes in that area. And the search continues for a teen around a pond full of alligators. Those stories in the weekend forecast right now on Good Morning Sun Coast. Good morning. It is 530 on this Thursday morning. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. Let's get the first peek at the weekend forecast from the great Scalzini. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. Clear and quiet this morning. Actually, very nice start to the day. A little bit warmer than it was 24 hours ago and a little bit of fair weather clouds kind of streaming across the center part of the state. Titan radar shows rain free across the entire region. That's the way it's going to be. But there's that cloud cover coming in from Mexico. Actually, it'll eventually, I think, mix away, bringing us mostly sunny afternoon skies and it'll be another warm one. Current temperatures out the door 67 Sarasota, 69 Venice and Inglewood, 66 in Bradenton, Longbow Key at 70 Lakewood Ranch at 66 forecast for Today calls for a daytime high up near 90, rain-free conditions, and maybe slightly higher humidity. We'll talk about the entire weekend forecast, including that chance of rain Ray was talking about, coming up in just a few. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic right now. Nothing to speak of so far outside of one little blip there on State Road 70 westbound as you head toward the interstate near Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. Otherwise, all clear in Manatee County. Farther south now. See some issues there on B Ridge from the eastbound lane around Honoré and also at uh, Stickney Point where it turns into Clark Road on the uh, lower half of your screen at Gulf Gate Estates. And then our final map to the south will show us nothing to speak of right now. That'll change though as the morning commute begins. Right now it's 531 on your Thursday morning. This morning, three Americans imprisoned in North Korea are now back home here in the U.S. They arrived in Washington just after 2 o'clock this morning. President Trump was there to welcome them. Their release, a symbolic move by the North Korean President Kim Jong-un, ahead of a historic planned meeting with President Trump. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest from Washington. Overnight, the highly anticipated moment. Three Korean Americans detained in North Korea back in the U.S., welcomed by President Trump. It was a very important thing to all of us to be able to get these three great people out. The ex-prisoners throwing up peace signs, a patriotic homecoming for the men who appear to be in good health. Kim Dung Chol, sentenced to hard labor in North Korea in 2015. Kim Hak Song and Kim Sang Duk last year. Yes, uh, we were treated in many different ways. Uh, for me, I had to do a lot of labor. But when I got sick, I was also treated by them. The release, symbolic, and a victory for President Trump ahead of his planned summit with dictator Kim Jong-un. He was nice in letting him go before the meeting. I mean, frankly, we didn't think this was going to happen. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo escorted the men to the U.S. He was in the North working out the details for the president's meeting with Kim. A location and time now set. One reported location, Singapore. It's been floated by President Trump. The president focused on the goal of the historic summit, a denuclearized Korean peninsula. My proudest achievement will be, this is a part of it, but will be when we denuclearize that entire peninsula. This is what people have been waiting for for a long time. President Trump says he believes Kim Jong-un wants to bring his country into the real world. The ex-prisoners are being evaluated and treated at Walter Reed Medical Center. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. Happening today, the Pentagon expected to release the results of an investigation into the deaths of four American soldiers who were ambushed last October by ISIS fighters in North Africa. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine said that people will be held accountable for the unauthorized portions of a mission involving American soldiers, four of whom were killed in an ambush. All right, unusual story here. Try to follow this along. Almost 20 years after the disappearance of her husband, a Tallahassee woman is now charged with his murder. Denise Williams made her first appearance in court yesterday. Her husband, Mike, never came home from a hunting trip in December of 2000. The whereabouts of his remains were a mystery until five months ago. They were found after Mike's friend, Brian Winchester, was sentenced to 20 years in prison for kidnapping his wife, Denise. Turns out that Denise married Winchester after her husband disappeared. She now faces charges of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and accessory after the fact. 
the state attorney working the case didn't comment on how Denise Williams might have planned or committed her first husband's murder. Well, after years of fighting, a Sarasota attorney has dropped a discrimination lawsuit against Disney. Sarah Blackwell has been representing 30 of the 250 IT employees laid off by Disney back in 2015. Now, according to those employees, they were forced to train their replacements from India or lose their severance package. On Wednesday, three of those former Disney employees stood next to Blackwell as she announced that she was dropping the case. Now, Blackwell says what Disney did is actually legal because of a loophole in our law. This is not just a loss for Disney workers. It is a loss for the millions of American workers who have been and are now suffering from this terrible business model. Blackwell says that she still plans to fight for American workers' rights because d what Disney did to its employees is still happening across the country in other companies. More cases of E. coli have been linked to tainted romaine lettuce, and some of those cases yep, have turned up in Florida. Health officials say 28 new cases have been reported in Florida, Minnesota, North Dakota, and Texas. The CDC says the total number is now 149. More than 60 people in 29 states have been hospitalized, and 17 of those have kidney failure. Well, over the past few months, there have been several shootings in the North Sarasota neighborhood of Newtown. But despite those incidents, police say the number of shootings has actually gone down there. Marla Spence has a closer look from Newtown. Marla? Good morning, guys. Although this area has seen its share of crime, City Commissioner Willie Shaw says the number of crimes and police say the number of crimes have decreased. They say that a number of initiatives in this area is helping to promote positivity and to help people realize that gun violence is not the way. Now, so far, there are two mentorship programs that are helping out with the issue. I'm told by Commissioner Willie Shaw that a Brotherhood of uh, of men is one mentorship program that is offering help and that is actually led by an SRO at Booker High School and another mentorship program is men and women of uh, standard that is also happening here in the Newtown area. Now they say that they are hoping to bring three other initiatives to help promote positivity and speak against gun violence. We spoke to Commissioner Shaw and this is what he had to say. We're looking forward to putting on a march in this uh, same awareness and uh, hopefully we can become preventative in this. In being proactive, we are also doing a gun buyback. There's no word yet on when exactly that gun buyback or that march will be held. That date um, is to be announced according to uh, the city of Sarasota. Now, so far, uh, we are being told that the crime rate in this area has gone down. So far this year, there have only been 14 shootings um, that has been with guns and only one homicide. Last year, there were 28 shootings and one homicide. Commissioner Shaw says back in 2011, there were close to seven homicides in this area. Reporting live in Newtown. I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. Despite the clever ads, the self-proclaimed king of beers is losing popularity. Why Americans are drinking less bud. And caught on camera how firefighters managed to get these tiny little ducklings to safety. We're going to have their story. But first, here's a live look at Capitol Hill. The rotunda is just waking up this morning. Lots going on in this morning's Capitol after, of course, the release of those three Americans now back from being detained in North Korea. Looks like a postcard. It's such a pretty does, shot out there right does. now. How about the local forecast, John Scalzi? Yeah, it looks good. Morning commute. Again, none of the inclement weather boxes are checked this morning. No rain on your roadways, no fog to limit visibility. Wind's not an issue over the skyway, and temps, they're good. We're looking at temperatures as you head out the door in the low 70s, upper 80s when you come home today. Another warm one in the forecast and all airport hubs serving Sarasota International Airport running on time, according to the FAA. Complete forecast, including those weekend rains, coming up in a minute. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. 
Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care, and today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, A Place for Mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call A Place for Mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352 that's 1 800 290 0352. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. Meteorologist John Scalzi. 67 degrees by around 7 o'clock this morning under... Mostly quiet conditions. We've got a little bit of high cloudiness. That's about it. By uh, noon, we'll look at 85 degrees, and then we'll be well on our way to 90 as we head into 3 p.m. hour. The adjusted high temperature yesterday was 92. I don't think we'll quite make it to that. That was pretty close to a record, but we will still be warm with 82 as we head into the evening hours and sunset. Looks like it's going to be just great. 67 the air temperature, dew point values just a little bit higher this morning than they were 24 hours ago, so it feels a little bit more humid. Still comfortable, ish. At 64, certainly not what it was like when it was 58, but still OK. North northeast wind coming in at about five. We have temperatures across the region that are generally a degree or two or three warmer than they were 24 hours ago. 66 Wachula, 67 Mayaka, 67 in Sarasota, 69 Venice, Inglewood and, La and uh, Longbow Key coming in at 71, Bradenton at 68. These temperatures are fairly uniform, maybe a little bit warmer as you get closer to the coastline, but generally we're looking at slightly warmer temperatures, mostly because of the cloud cover that's streaming on by. Air quality, as I mentioned, is the 74 as of yesterday afternoon. That's better than it has been. And today, some of the computer models suggest that it might be a little bit higher today, but still below the threshold for uh, issuing any kind of an advisory or whatever. High pressure, the dominant weather feature in the deep south. Couple of areas of low pressure streaming across the northern tier. They stay there. We get this high, bringing us again a more northerly flow, dry air coming our way. But a trough of low pressure moving through the Florida Straits out into the Atlantic promises the potential for some weekend rain. So sunny and warm today. Weekend rains possible. 
and kind of humidity returning in time for Mother's Day, so it's going to feel more summer-like than anything else. Another way to look at it, this is the available moisture for rain in the atmosphere from the ground to the tip of the weather-producing atmosphere, and you can see the humid air that's stuck down to the south. That's why we had those showers on our surface map down through the Florida Straits and into the Atlantic. Watch what happens as the high pressure ridge, which has been over us bringing sunny skies, starts to migrate a little bit and bring us a wind that comes more directly out of the east with time. If the computer would advance, what you would see would be this, there we go, would be this humid air beginning to lift north over the weekend and give us better rain chances. That humidity will probably stick with us for several days as the dry air retreats to the west. Future forecast shows those rain showers lifting northward. On Thursday, we look good today. Friday, we look good. Saturday, maybe a few scattered showers around, but on Sunday, that whole trough lifts northward. The humidity lifts northward, and into Monday even, we have decent chances of showers. Bullseye for severe weather is in the midsection of the country today and tomorrow. Kind of goes away on Saturday and the weekend, but we'll start to work in chances of showers and thunderstorms through the state of Florida as we head into the weekend as well. So the forecast shapes up like this. As soon as we advance the computer, we'll show you what that forecast looks like, but it's going to be topping out today again with temperatures pretty warm. There we go, pretty warm with uh, 90 degrees on Thursday. On uh, Friday, we've got about 89 degrees. Saturday and Sunday, we work in those rain chances with the best rain chance day of the weekend on Mother's Day, unfortunately. Not a whole day rain out, but scattered afternoon showers and maybe a thunderstorm or two. And that trend carries us into next work week. Back to you. All right, thanks, John. It is 546. This is Look Outside to your first alert traffic out there. Let's start off in Manatee County. Not too much to see out there. It's 301 starting to see a little bit of slowdown heading northbound. So you're going to watch out for that one. It's going to slow you down just a little bit this morning. And then in Sarasota County, those roads are actually looking pretty decent. Not too many of the usual slowdowns that we do see. You have a pretty smooth commute that in that area this morning. And then a little bit farther south in the area, those roads are also looking pretty good. Not too much on any of those maps that so we can move to the southern half a little bit. If you're heading farther south to Port Charlotte or Punta Gorda in the next 30 to 45 minutes, you should have a pretty easy commute. That is your first alert traffic, Ray. A search is underway for a teenage boy last seen flailing in this Orlando retention pond as Vanessa Areza tells us an alligator may have attacked him. You are looking at Sky 6 aerial views of today's search and rescue efforts. Crews have been using sonar devices for hours trying to find a person who reportedly disappeared underwater just before noon today. We did not witness anyone in the water, but the, we have a witness, a uh, very credible witness, who said he saw someone uh, flailing about in the water and at some point making a statement saying, it bit me. It bit me. Who that person is? Deputies are working to find out. Jeff Williamson with the Orange County Sheriff's Office said deputies have knocked on doors in the area asking if anyone they knew was missing. They've also checked with their office for any missing persons. It was bound to happen sooner or later. Ruben Perez lives a block away from the retention pond. Just two days ago, he saw an alligator in the area. So it's not come out and the tail go like that. He was swimming towards me. I said, okay, see you later. Time to go. An alligator about six feet long was spotted today during the search. My understanding is that that's not large enough to take a grown man down. We don't know um, if that is the case or not. FWC alligator trappers are on standby should they be needed. Well, this Bud's not for you. It seems that Americans aren't drinking as much Budweiser as they once did. Anheuser-Busch said on Wednesday that Budweiser self sales fell just over 1% during the first quarter of 2017. Why? Well, two words, craft beer. There are so many now to choose from and become so popular that they're cutting into the sales for the country's traditional brews. But Budweiser is still doing just fine overseas. Sales are actually up just over 2% around the world thanks to solid numbers from both Latin America and Asia. For the first time in 30 years, Best Buy has changed its logo. The company launched its new look on Wednesday. It features the familiar white, blue, and yellow color scheme, which with a simplified design, the signature yellow tag is smaller, and the words Best Buy have been removed from the tag itself now. The chain said it wanted the logo to be, quote, more modern and easier to read, especially in today's digital world. Well, here's a feel-good Thursday story for you. Firefighters in Rochester, New York, saved these four tiny little
little ducklings and they were trapped in a storm drain yesterday. Mm. Now it took several tools and the soft hands of some crew members to get the job done, but they eventually did get them all out. They were all fine. All the ducklings were sent on their way. They were reunited with their duck mother who gave them a stern talking to in a timeout in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in line, folks. I love watching the, the mother duck lead the other ducks across I know. sidewalks and I grass, know, but I not know. in this drains. <laughs> well, happening today, it's World Lupus Day. It's a global call to action on behalf of the millions affected by lupus. And it is why we are all wearing purple today in support of World Lupus Day. Now, if you're not familiar, lupus is actually a chronic autoimmune disease that can damage any part of your body. And there's all different kinds of symptoms and it's very hard to diagnose. Chronic means that the signs and symptoms do tend to last longer than six weeks. And for some, those flare ups can happen for many years. Mm -hmm. And again, we're all wearing purple today in support of the cause, World Lupus Day. Very painful. I've had friends who, yes, who have uh, that. One of my best friends has it as well. Yeah. Yeah. 550 will update the day's top local news headlines when we come back. That is right. Beautiful day out there. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast right here on ABC7. Judy here, I think. I think hospice was a tremendous source of support for her. Absolutely. With Jennifer and Kimberly and Liza's constant contact with us, coming in, just knowing that there was someone with knowledge there to back us up, to answer our questions, it made a world of difference. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Want the latest weather and traffic conditions wherever you go? Introducing ABC 7's revolutionary new First Alert weather app. With our state-of-the-art new weather app, you get up-to-the-minute weather alerts, interactive radar maps, current conditions, 10-day forecasts, real-time traffic maps, and weather video from ABC 7, all at your fingertips. And it's free. Just search Suncoast WX in the App Store and download onto all your devices today. Sponsored by Mr. Sparky. I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling. She's always on time. She gives fantastic customer service and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. You're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah. Yes. So much fun. Mwah. If you're looking for a rewarding job you'll love, good news. The perfect job is just a click away. Go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day. It's that easy. Stop searching and go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to find the perfect job for you. Well, it is 554, and here are some of the top stories that we've been following for you throughout the morning. Three Americans held in North Korea arrived back on American soil at 2.30 a.m., President Trump and the First Lady were there to welcome them back to the U.S. Plus, this morning, emergency crews in Orlando will continue the search for a teen who went missing in an Orlando lake known to be the home of several alligators. And the Eastern Conference Finals begin tomorrow night in Tampa. The Bolts 
host of Washington Capitals best of seven series. The winner of this series goes on to the Stanley Cup Finals. And coming up in the next hour, breaking overnight, three U.S. detainees, as we told you, are back home this morning. What their release now means for U.S.-North Korean relations. And later on today, police are searching for a man wanted in connection with the murder of a teen in Northport. We're going to have the update on that story and why the search is on. We have those stories coming straight ahead when Good Morning Sun Coast continues at 6. But first, one last peek at the forecast this hour from John Scalzi. Well, temperatures are generally running a few degrees warmer than they were 24 hours ago with 66 Wachula, 67 Sarasota, 68 in Bradenton. Richard in Northport. Phones in with his weather report coming in with 63 degrees in Cooper, our youngest weather watcher in central Sarasota, 68 degrees. A little bit of high cloudiness around, but no rain in the forecast for today as daytime highs top out near 90. We'll talk about re weekend rains coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right. Also uh, later today in ABC 7, the fourth of my profiles of the uh, Dick Vitale pediatric cancer kids will be on tonight in the 6 o'clock news. That's I had right. brunch yesterday with a 20-year-old named Aaron who the first few years of her life weren't tough, easy. Tough, tough. Yeah, so we'll meet her today in the 6 p.m. news on ABC7. Yes. The Dick Vitale Gala is tomorrow night, where they hope to raise in one night three and a half million dollars. She's done some great things for these kids as well, and they all want to give back and help. If you've missed any of these stories, you can find them all online at mysuncoast.com. Thanks for that. All right, more news next hour right here on Good Morning Suncoast.